The Hive thermostat is a popular smart heating controller which can be found in many homes across the UK. It can help you control your heating and save on your energy bills, but like any other piece of tech, it comes with its problems. In today's video, we'll cover all these problems and how to fix them, so leave a like and stay tuned for the whole video. The Hive thermostat offers a convenient way to control your heating from anywhere in the world as long as you have a data connection. I use it across my home and my family's homes as it is so easy to control and use in the very simple app. They've become so popular due to the easy installation, the great app interface and integrations with smart homes like Alexa and Google Home. One of the key features of the Hive thermostat is its wireless connectivity with your Wi-Fi hub. As you can imagine, this comes with its own issues, if your Wi-Fi goes down, how do you control your heating? If the issue is in regards to your Wi-Fi, Hive can't control what your Wi-Fi is doing. So if your Wi-Fi does go down, the Hive simply turns into an on and off boiler. You won't be able to control it from your phone or use any sort of timing schedules. It'll either be on or off, and that's how it works. Carrying on with connectivity issues, if your thermostat can't connect to the receiver, it'll either be a distance issue where your thermostat is too far away from your receiver, or it'll be just a pairing issue which you'll have to fix inside the app. To do this, turn off the thermostat with the batteries, just take them out, put them back in, and hopefully it'll reconnect by itself. If not, head over to the receiver and press the button, hold it down until it starts to flash. This means it's in pairing mode and you can now connect to your thermostat. Additionally, if your Wi-Fi router is too far away from the boiler or the thermostat, it may have issues connecting all together. In this case, it may be worth looking into moving your router across your home, maybe putting an ethernet cable downstairs, you have to route it downstairs, or vice versa, if your boiler is upstairs, make that move. It could also just be your router not being strong enough, so maybe invest in a more powerful router. However, the Hive runs off 2.4 gigahertz, which is next to nothing in terms of Wi-Fi. Another common issue is to do with battery life. If the Hive is on low battery, the performance, of course, is going to be the same. Make sure to always top up your batteries whenever you get a chance, take them out and put them back in, or invest in some higher quality batteries like Duracell, which will last for a very long time. I've had mine for around six months now, and I've had no issues with the Duracell batteries that comes with the pack. But the first thing I would do if I ever have any issues with the Hive would be to swap out the batteries for brand new ones. This just saves you any issues. If you do get it back up working, it doesn't die straight away. Hardware and installation concerns can rise from the Hive Mini. If it is installed incorrectly, of course you are gonna face some problems. To avoid this, don't install it yourself get out a professional. If you buy a new boiler, add it to the order and get it installed at the same time. At iHeat.co.uk, when you order a new boiler, you can now add the Hive Mini to your basket. And on the day, the engineer will come in, install your boiler and install the Hive and show you how to use it. If you do install the Hive yourself, which you can do, there are enough tutorials out there. You can only blame yourself when it goes wrong. Wiring to the boiler can be quite complicated and it does change depending on which boiler you have. The video you watch online, how to do it, maybe with a Worcester boiler, but you have an ideal or a valent where the controls are completely different. Touching back on installation, if you install your receiver next to your boiler but have your thermostat on the other side of your house which is really really far away, they may not connect and talk to each other. To fix this, move your thermostat a bit closer, see if it works and if it does work you know that's the issue. If not, go back to where it was and carry on with this video. Another reason for your hive not working could be the boiler you've paired it to. Maybe your boiler doesn't work with hives, maybe you should check online for the compatibility issues. Most boilers these days do work with hive, anything sold at iHeat does as well, but if you get a random one from B&Q and install it in your home, it probably isn't gonna work with a high street manufacturer like Hive. From here, the only other issue could just be you. You and the app not knowing what you're doing, not knowing how to use it, and you could have it on a schedule where it comes on at four in the morning and goes off at eight in the morning, and you're wondering why you don't have heating. For this, check out my video up here where I walk through the entire app, which is for the Hive. This will work with the Hive Mini and the Hive Full Size, by the way. Follow that tutorial, make sure it is set correctly and your timings as to how you like it. I keep mine in manual mode because it's just so easy just to go up or down if it's too hot. Very, very basic. But for those with more structured lifestyles where they are outside of the house from nine to five, it may be worth having a schedule in place to save you on your bills. And as always, if you don't know what you're doing with the app, ask for help, get someone with experience, or just follow that video very closely so you don't mess up. Hopefully the fixes listed in this video have helped you solve your issues with your hive. If not, let me know your issues in the comment section down below and I will see you in the next video. This has been our heat.